I'm interested in studying trees. Specifically, I'm interested in trying to measure trees, measure different aspects of trees. So how do we take, we can see a tree, but how do we turn that into a quantity? We can quantify how much wood volume is in a tree, or one of the recent areas of interest is how much carbon is sequestered in trees. One aspect of trees that um, everyone sort of looks at, um, maybe consciously or unconsciously, is the characteristics of the tree's bark. And if you look at a tree's bark, okay, it's actually quite a complex surface. And it really is controlled both by internal genetic factors and external environmental factors. And as the tree grows in size over its lifespan, there's pressure from internal growth against the what are dead layers of bark that have already accumulated. And so there's this this force which is pushing from internally as the tree grows and actually starts to split the bark. So trees develop these characteristic bark patterns part of because of this growth and uh, bark fissuring, the splitting of the bark. And also there's external factors that affect it. And actually this ant wandering on the surface kind of gets into what this specific research is. I actually started looking at a tree in my backyard and watching a white-breasted nuthatch, which is a bird which literally crawls along the surface of tree bark and it forages on the surface and particularly it sticks its beak in these fissures, these cracks and crevices in the tree's bark and it probes in there. Insects overwintering will lay their eggs in the fissures of tree bark. Uh, for, for insects like that ant, we were just looking at it, it'll just, this is like a highway. It's really, if you look at it closely, it's like a mountain chain. And these are valleys, and then there are ridges, and there are little caves. And so to smaller organisms, you have this complex topography that is described by the surface of tree bark. Now the way that uh, most scientists deal with tree bark is using what we would call um, just common language, qualitative terms. We say that tree bark is smooth, it's shaggy, it's flaky, it's rough. We use all these different terms. I still wanted to think of a way I could measure in a repeatable way the structure of the bark. Now the most common measurement and really probably the oldest measurement people have ever taken of trees is to measure the circumference of the tree and we measure that at a standard height which is about the height of an average person's arms. We call that breast height. So we measure uh, either the circumference or the diameter, how wide the tree is at breast height. And this measurement is taken on trees all over the world. Now what I can do is I wanted to measure the depth and the frequency of fissures. So I'm going to count along the transect how many fissures there are and how deep and measure how deep they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get um, I'm going to be able to count the number of fissures per unit length. That's going to give me a metric I came up with called fissure frequency. And so trees that have more or deeper fissures will have a higher bark fissure index. And trees that have fewer shallower fissures will have a lower bark fissure index. And trees that are perfectly smooth will have a bark fissure index of zero. This is extrapolated through a model to the whole tree. And if you look up at any tree, what you'll see is as you go higher and higher up in the tree, the parts of the tree get smaller. And because they're smaller, they have lower bark fissure indexes. So uh, without getting into the complexities of it, it, it scales uh, with the whole tree. So what we learned from that research is that um, what we already knew, <laughs> which is that trees of different size and species have more complex bark, but now I have a methodology to quantify that. So I can compare two trees basically on their bark fissure index. But it wasn't satisfied just coming up with this and demonstrating this. I wanted to actually test it and see whether um, a bark foraging animal, the white-breasted nuthatch in particular, actually cared. You know, you would think that this bird, which forages on the surface, would pick trees preferentially that have a higher bark fissure index than more smooth bark trees. Well, now I've come up with a way we can add forest bark structure to a description of the whole forest structure. So we could go into our campus woodlot, Baker Woodlot, and we could go and measure a bunch of trees, and based on their species and their size, 
we could plug that data into these models and actually predict how much bark structure each tree did and then extrapolate that up to the whole forest. And so we could compare different forests, which forests have more complex bark structure and which forests have less complex bark structure. And there's also evidence uh, in the scientific literature that areas that have more complex bark structure have much greater biodiversity. But this all started with me watching this nuthatch in my backyard. So a lot of forest management is about trying to optimize the number and figure of trees. There's direct conservation implications to the research because we know that there's this complex food web that's associated with tree bark, but it's one that we don't tend to think about a lot. It's mainly the tiny things, like you can see there are lichens in here, which are basically like little forests growing in these canyons, and there's insects growing up in here. and so. Most of that is reflected in the larger organisms that we tend to use as indicators. Birds is one of the most common species we use as an indicator of environmental quality. But, you know, these ecosystems are very complex, so I'm always reticent to say, you know, this is the most important factor and that foresters should run around managing for bark structure. And probably most, you know, uh, professional foresters are managing for a lot of other things. Um, so I think I wanted the research also to just highlight that here's this element of, of trees that we look at, but we don't necessarily think of the full import of how it's connected into this um, really whole ecosystem that's created by this surface. In, in most areas, are there enough, you know, bark fissures? <laughs> you know, I don't know the answer to that. It's like asking, are there enough caves, you know, they're in a mountain. 